Hello, my friends. Hope you guys are doing well today. Today's topic is insights on helping people. It's a very powerful thing to think about and to do is helping other people. But a lot of people have a good heart, but they don't recognize that sometimes the first step is to help yourself, to build yourself up, to give yourself options and resources. And when you do that, you can help a lot more, you know, when it comes to helping other people. You can be that much more helpful when you're in a good situation. But when you're limited and you can barely get by yourself, when you are just trying to make sense of the world yourself, How much of a use are you to other people? So it's very important to build yourself up. And it's not a selfish thing. It's not a selfish thing at all because the more that you have, the more that you know, the more that you can share. One of the first things that I got thinking about when I got thinking on this topic of helping other people is that it's really important, though, to help present new ways of thinking. New ways of thinking. I mean, humans are just known for that. It's a creature that thinks. You know, I mean, there are other creatures out there that have awareness. But humans, at least to the best of our knowledge, are one of the only ones that really have very deep-seated critical thinking. We have a very... Uh, abstract way of thinking about some things. We use a lot of symbolism. We have a fairly complex language. I mean, it's really interesting how we use uh, other systems as well, mathematics and so forth. And to present a new way of thinking to someone can open up a whole world of possibilities Uh, All kinds of new things can flood in just by you introducing one aspect of the world that they were not aware of. You can change a person completely. You can spike their motivation. You can pique their curiosity. You can change them, you know, in a very deep and profound way. You can inherently alter their course because they see a path ahead for them. Maybe it's something that they never saw before. And that's, that could be a real blessing to someone, just for someone to come along and say, hey, do you, do you know about this? And I think this could help you, but do you know about this? So imparting new knowledge, new wisdom, and insights to live better. Right there is a lot, right? I mean, that right there is so heavy. When you really think about it, someone that is completely ignorant of an aspect of thinking or life, or they're just lacking a certain type of wisdom that they they desperately need. And you come along and you have part of the solution, or you have at least... uh, the ability to show them what path they need to take to get to the solution that they seek and they need. It's a real strong, powerful thing that you can do for someone is to present new ways of thinking, new knowledge, new wisdom, and overall just insights on how to live better, how to help themselves, right? In today's society, we see so much welfare, and it's pushed on the citizens a lot of times. Instead of talking about how the people can contribute on their own, how can they build themselves up? How can communities come together and solve problems, right? That is something that you don't see as much of as you used to. And I think we need to get back on that road, that path. I think it's also really important to stay grounded in facts when you help another person. Stay as grounded as possible with what you know to be true. And don't just add things just because it sounds good. Don't expound upon things just because you want to look good and be impressive. You just tell them the facts. And in most cases, the people who don't know those facts are pretty much like, I mean, 
just trying to take it all in. Some people are probably overwhelmed with just that. So you don't need to try to make it even more intense than it is. And I would honestly say to this, to this next point here is that you should probably only share your opinions after the facts have been shared and they have been asked for. So many times I talk to people and they're trying to tell me about something in a factual way, but then they start mixing in all their opinions with the facts and it's kind of hard to kind of pull the two apart and try to filter out what is what. So it's a lot more simple and it's a lot more uh, just efficient to, to tell the facts first. And if the person wants your opinion, then you can tell it to them if they ask you for it. And this is what I call prioritizing, you know, to prioritize what is important to kind of know what comes before something else. There are certain things in life that are more important than other things. And we know this, but so often our ego gets so entangled with process and there's all kinds of processes out there. But typically when we're in the process of helping someone, it is not uncommon for our ego to get enmeshed into the process. And we think that it's all about us or part about us when it really should be about them. Don't make everything personal as well. You do want to get to know the person, but you don't want to make what you're doing so personal that it becomes a distraction. And what we see is that most processes are structured in logical ways. And thankfully so, right? So we don't have to be a certain way, you know, and have to use all this emotion to convey certain things. Typically, we can just typically describe these things in a logical way structured way. And that really avoids misunderstand, you know, misunderstandings, uh, confusion, and, and so forth. <clears throat> it's also advisable when you're trying to help someone is to simplify complex subjects. You break them down into manageable bits. And you just take, take them down to the elemental form if possible. And then go from there. And allow time for the person to understand, to think through what you just told them. If, if it's new to them, it can take a few minutes. In fact, it could be taking a few days for some people. It can take a few days or even weeks for some people to get a really good grasp on a concept that they've never even heard anything about. For other people, it could take just a few moments for them to click and go, whoa, I now understand what you're saying. I would also get confirmation of understanding before moving on. And you can do this very simply by asking the person for the understanding to be verbalized in their own words. And if they can do this, then you know it's time to move on to something else or to build on what you're talking about. It's also very helpful, though, when you're trying to help someone to understand how the person you are helping thinks. It's good to know how the person you're helping thinks and what his or her needs are and what their goals are because it's a lot easier to help someone when you know what they want and need and where they're trying to go. That's a, that's a pretty good thing to do, right? To get to know that person. I think it's also something that gets missed is, is the expansion upon the possible. And for someone to come up to someone that needs help and you have some type of relationship with them, you know them, and you bring to them an expanded awareness, an expanded a possibility, 
and you open up the landscape for them in various ways. It could be symbolically or it could be something of a physical nature. It could be emotional nature, whatever it may be, just knowledge. But you open up the landscape of what could be. And and showing someone that there could be something so much greater or something a lot larger than what they previously thought is very powerful. Just as formulating a plan using a calendar, having a detailed plan to accomplish goals. And of course, this includes a time and a date. That's why we use a calendar. And so you can expand someone's landscape. But what are they going to do within that new landscape? And this is where the plan comes into play. And you have to have a really detailed plan on a timeline for things to really happen in the real world. And I would also ask, though, before you make these plans and before you commit and before you, you know, you get someone else to commit, you know, to what they want to do, you know, you might want to ask them to think about these, these points here. Have them ask these questions before investing a major amount of time and energy into what they want to pursue. And that would include, will I be more peaceful? Will I be more productive? Will I be more happy? Will I agree with my new lifestyle? And will my well-being be elevated? These are important things. And there's other questions to be asked as well. But these are very important. It's important also to try to explain and demonstrate to someone you're helping how they can use compounding aspects in their life and how to leverage time and and action. How can they do these things to build from where they're at? Compounding and leveraging action uh, bolsters your rate of success and efficiency. But it comes with a really clear understanding about time management. And it comes also with this understanding of what it means to be consistent in what you do and how you view the world. How do you see the big picture? And do you anticipate the obstacles? And do you have a plan to overcome the obstacles? Do you have a real long-term momentum? Do you have a long-term foresight? Do you have a long-term picture in your head? So I think clearly that building a person up, supporting them, and, and showing them how to maintain what they acquire. This is so important. So many times people see the way, they take that path, they work very hard, spend years of their life to get to a place and they are successful. But once they touch that point of success, they don't know how to maintain it and they lose it. So showing people what is necessary to maintain what they acquire is vital. It's a vital attribute in helping other people. Because you're not really helping them if you get them to success, but they can't maintain success. So don't forget about that. Thanks for checking out my video. You guys take care.